Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And um, I received a notice through one of the news feeds I get from medical sites and that sort of thing about more states passing laws concerning notification to women who have dense breasts about their increased risk of cancer. So I started looking into it. I thought it was going to be a short thing, and then I ended up writing an article with 26 references, and it took the greater part of the afternoon. But it's a nice addition to our library, and it's information that you really should know. So here's, here it goes. I'll just start at the beginning. It's, it's sign up, sort of a long amount of information to cover, and I'll try to make it as understandable as possible with um, the statistics and that sort of thing. But you guys who are subscribers can go pick up this article in the library and read it carefully. So an association has been established between increased breast density and a very small increase in the risk of cancer. It's amazing to me how things get blown out of proportion. And so I'm going to give you specific data, and I think you'll agree with me, it's a small increased risk. Mammography has been shown to be ineffective for identifying aggressive tumors early and thus reducing the risk of dying of breast cancer. And mammography is even more useless when it comes to uh, using it with women who have dense breasts. Well, at this time, 36 states have passed laws requiring that mammogram reports include specific information about breast density. These laws have been passed based on very weak and limited evidence, mostly observational cohort studies showing that supplemental screening leads to more cancer detection. Now, one of the things that is important to point out here, more cancer detection does not mean longer life or survival. Okay, it just means that we're hurting more people into the medical mill, and there are quite a few articles posted in our library about that if you're interested in this topic. These same studies also show that false positives are a byproduct of additional screenings for women with dense breasts. Well, false positives are one of the negative consequences of mammography, which makes the data so terrible from mammography screening in terms of reducing death, death rates. So, more false positives is not what we're looking for. What people should be looking for is, I want to live a longer life without disease. So we get tied up all in the weeds of this kind of stuff, and we lose focus on what really is important. So what is the incidence of dense breasts in women? It's estimated that between 38 and 57 percent of women between 30, 40 and 59 have dense or very dense breasts. So since this affects so many women, I think it's really important to determine the actual risks associated with having dense breasts and the extent to which mammography and follow-up screening can be useful. Women with more dense breasts, just to tell you what this actually means, it means that they have more connective and epithelial tissue and less adipose tissue. Detection of cancer is more difficult in women with dense breasts because fat is radiologically translucent and the x-ray can pass right through it. Adipose tissue appears darker on a mammogram and the contrast with, a, with an abnormality shows up pretty well. On the other hand, epithelial and connective tissue is dense, it blocks the x-ray and appears white on a mammogram. Thus, mammographic, mammographic density decreases the accuracy rate of screening and is an independent risk factor for cancer, or so they say. So, for purposes of determining risks, there are four levels um, that, uh, that are talked about, and level one is almost all fatty tissue, 5 to 24 uh, percent density. Level two is scattered areas of density, but still mostly fatty tissue. Level three is areas of non-dense tissue, but 50 to 75 percent dense tissue. And level four is over 75 percent dense tissue with very little fatty tissue. And the reason you need to know this is because one of the ways that a lot of hysteria has been ginned up about this is studies involving comparisons within these types of groups that are not really valid, and I'll explain that in a minute. So a meta-analysis, let's start with this, that compared percent density and breast cancer incidence showed that if you're a level four, you might have as much as 4.5 times higher risk of developing cancer, and that sounds really scary. But the problem is that women with varying levels of dense breasts were compared with women who had breasts made up entirely, of, almost entirely, of fatty tissue. Well, fewer than 10% of women have either almost all fatty tissue 
or really dense breasts. And so the better comparison would actually be, um, well, it, it really means that you get a lot of unneeded anxiety as you, as you compare those two groups. But since over half of women have dense breasts, it might be more accurate to compare the risk of cancer in women with dense breasts to the risk in an average woman who has some breast density. And the numbers look entirely different if you do this comparison. So for example, data from studies using this comparison, um, one study of over 100,000 women and over 300,000 mammograms showed that the cancer rate was 6.7 per thousand mammograms in women with dense breasts versus 5.5 per thousand in women who did not have dense breasts. Now that sounds a whole lot less frightening than, oh my gosh, I'm level four, so I have five times the risk of cancer as somebody else, right? Another study looked at data for over 365,000 women who were between the ages of 40 and 74 and showed that breast density should not be the sole criteria for deciding whether or not supplemental screening is necessary. Five-year risk was low to average for women with what we call heterogeneously dense breasts and 52.5% of women with extremely dense breasts. The interval cancer rate was 0.58 to 0.63 per thousand examinations for women with heterogeneous breasts, 0.72 to 0.89 per thousand examinations for women with extremely dense breasts. Bar barely perceptible. If it hadn't been for the number of women in the cohort, you, there would be nothing for us to talk about. Further analysis that uh, showed that considered uh, um, additional risk factors should be considered when you're determining whether or not a woman should be subjected to additional screening. And by the way, there is no known mechanism for how dense breast tissue contributes to an increased risk of breast cancer, which brings me to the next thing. The causes of dense breasts are probably the cause of cancer. In other words, we're looking at the wrong thing. We're focusing on the wrong thing. You guys hear me say this all the time. So some research says genetics plays a role in this, but genetics is not the primary thing. Research shows that women eating a westernized diet have a higher mammographic density. That's not surprising. A study of postmenopausal Japanese women showed that higher intake of protein and fat increased breast density. On the other hand, carbohydrate intake was inversely associated with dense breasts. Higher alcohol intake has been shown to increase breast density. Hormone replacement therapy increases breast density. Tamoxifen, which is prescribed for women who have had breast cancer, for the first 18 months of treatment increases breast density. So if you look at risk factors for breast cancer, those things increase breast density. We're paying attention to the marker for these things rather than these things. And I think that's why the data does not look very good for um, screening. And I'll show you what, what the data does show, this extra screening, and does it make any difference. Well, a major complication in the use of breast density to determine breast cancer risk or the need for supplemental imaging is, first of all, it depends upon the radiologist. There's a great deal of variability. A 2016 study involving 216,783 mammograms from over 145,000 women were reviewed by 83 radiologists, and it showed that when different radiologists interpreted mammograms from women who had several of them within a relatively short period of time, the data were all over the place. And in fact, many times a woman went from um, very low risk based on her mammogram and breast density to a very high risk within a matter of hours as different radiologists looked at the, at the um, image. Um, in fact, there was a quote at the end, 25% of the radiologists rated fewer than 28.9% of their patients' mammograms as showing dense breasts, whereas the highest 25% of radiologists rated over half of the women's mammograms as showing dense breasts. So the diagnosis is highly subjective and to a certain extent, whether or not you're gonna get one of these, what I think most people consider frightening notifications, depends upon who looked at your image. So what kind of effect has the state notification laws had on, on the thing that really counts? Are we finding any more real cancer that's life-threatening and et cetera? Well, most state notifications encourage women to talk with their healthcare providers, who are usually apoplectic about this, just so you know, um, once they get the results of their mammograms. But some states actually require that the notifications include specific information about the potential benefits of additional screening, such as MRI, ultrasound, or both. 
based on the percentage of women who have dense breasts, we can expect for every thousand women having a screening mammogram, 380 or more will be required to be notified if they live in one of these 36 states that they have an increased risk of cancer and potentially that they should have additional screening. So are we saving any lives? What's this really translating to? Well, an analysis of over 1,440,000 mammograms in women aged 40 to 59 living in 34 states showed that the screening laws did result in increased use of supplemental ultrasound, but not MRI. The cancer detection rate, and I'll, and I'll try to make this as easy to understand as possible, it was 2.11 per thousand mammograms in states that didn't have any notification laws at all, 2.19 per thousand, so 2.11 to 2.19 in states with gen generic notification laws, no specifics about ultrasound, etc., and 2.48 in states that with laws that required specific language about the supplemental screening. The difference was barely statistically significant, um, but what this really comes down to is you get 0.37 more cancers detected per thousand mammograms, and to translate in that into some data that would make some sense to you, in order to find one case of cancer, over 1,100 women will receive a notification that they need more screening because they're at higher risk. Now, the authors of this particular study said the additional screening with its additional expense, psychological stress, and false positives can be expected to detect an additional 50 to 370 cancers per 1 million women screened. And studies show that 43% of women experience increased anxiety once they are told they have dense breasts. And by the way, another study that I talked about a few years ago showed that if you go two years out and you, um, and you look at the psychological status of women who are diagnosed with breast cancer versus women who had false positives, biopsies that showed nothing in the whole nine yards, the, the level of neuroticism was about the same in both groups. So, People are just not hardwired to think that something really terrible is going to happen and then have somebody say, never mind, and life goes back to normal again. It just doesn't work that way. There's a great deal of uncertainty concerning the efficacy of supplemental MRI and ultrasound. As a result, some health professionals recommend three-dimensional x-ray imaging of the breast. I mean, it's like you cannot give it up, right? So we'll just keep trying new things. Some studies show that the false positive rate is lower, but the technology uses twice as much radiation as conventional mammography, so it can increase the cancer risk. When the screening tools increase the cancer risk, we've got a problem. Additionally, the interpretation of this type of x-ray is highly dependent on the skill and expertise of the radiologist, so you're going to get just as much variability if you use this method. So what's the bottom line? Well, the risk of breast cancer due to dense breasts is much smaller than many other risk factors, such as diet and lifestyle and weight status, and we should be paying, th this is all, in my opinion, a ginormous distraction from the things that would make a difference, and, and that's what infuriates me about it. According to Priscilla Slanitz, she's a medical doctor and master of public health, associate professor of radiology at Harvard Medical School and program director of radiology residency at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. I'm going to tell you what she said, but the reason why I wanted to tell you what she said is this woman is a very traditional medical doctor who is a radiologist. This is her business, what we're talking about here. And here's what she says. Breast density is a risk factor for breast cancer but it's really a minor risk factor. It does make it harder for a mammogram to see things, but in terms of a true risk factor, we should not be using that as the sole determinant as to whether or not somebody should be getting supplemental screening. So when you've got somebody who is a radiology teacher working in a traditional environment saying, we need to put the brakes on this, I think that's really profound. So um, if you have dense breasts and you're being terrorized by, by uh, people recommending screening and more screening and more screening and more screening, you should read this article and make the decision for yourself. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you what the information that is published says. Um, this is a, we're talking about dense breasts. This is dense information, but uh, that's why it took all afternoon to do it. But um, I think it was worthwhile because it does affect so many women. I expected when I started this that I was going to be talking about something that affects a very minor number of women, but it's actually most women. So uh, important stuff to know. All right, as usual, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscriber button, and of course, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. I will be back to you next Thursday with more news because um, Monday is Labor Day. We're going to send out the newsletter on Tuesday and video clips on Thursday. So since we have a holiday coming up, I'm going to give you 
my usual recommendation to um, just listen to my voice in the back of your head when you're getting ready to eat something and just ask yourself, do you think Pam would probably eat this if she was here? It's a good litmus test to figure out whether or not you're getting ready to do something heinous or not. All right, so enjoy the holiday and I'll talk to you next week.